Imagine dropping a torpedo from the height of a commercial airliner, 30,000 feet above the ocean, and watching it glide silently through the clouds before splashing down exactly where an enemy submarine lurks below. This isn't some experimental prototype gathering dust in a hangar. Right now, American P-8 Poseidon aircraft are patrolling the world's oceans with this exact capability, fundamentally changing how we hunt submarines in the 21st century. The High Altitude Anti-Submarine Warfare Weapon Capability, or HAWK, has quietly revolutionized naval warfare, and most people have never even heard of it. For seven decades, hunting submarines meant one thing, flying dangerously low over hostile waters, often just 200 feet above the waves, making aircraft vulnerable to everything from surface-to-air missiles to small arms fire. But what if you could drop torpedoes from the safety of the stratosphere? Today, we're diving deep into the HAAWC system, pronounced HAWK, a game-changing technology that's transforming the P-8A Poseidon into the deadliest submarine hunter ever built. We'll explore how Boeing and the Navy engineered wings for torpedoes, examine the sophisticated kill chain that makes this possible, and reveal why China and Russia are scrambling to counter this American innovation that's been quietly deployed across the Pacific since 2022. This capability matters now more than ever. With China's submarine fleet expanding to 65 boats by 2025 and Russia resuming aggressive undersea patrols, America's ability to dominate the underwater battle space could determine the outcome of any future naval conflict. The Hawk system isn't just an upgrade, it's a strategic advantage that keeps American crews safer while making enemy submarines exponentially more vulnerable. Think of Hawk as a precision delivery system that turns a standard Mark 54 lightweight torpedo into a guided glider. The Air Launched Accessory Kit, or ALA, wraps around the torpedo like a high-tech cocoon, adding pop-out wings and GPS-guided control surfaces that transform a simple gravity bomb into a surgical strike weapon. Here's the brilliant simplicity. When released from 30,000 feet, the Hawk-equipped torpedo doesn't just fall, it flies. The wings deploy immediately after launch, allowing the weapon to glide up to 40 nautical miles from the release point. That's like dropping a torpedo over Baltimore and hitting a target in Washington, D.C. The GPS guidance system constantly adjusts the flight path, compensating for winds that can exceed 100 knots at altitude. The real magic happens in the final moments. As a torpedo approaches its program splash point, calculated by the P-8's mission computer based on Sonoboy data, a separation mechanism activates. The wing kit detaches and falls away while the Mark 54 torpedo deploys its parachute, entering the water at the optimal angle and speed to begin its underwater search pattern. Compare this to the old method. Aircraft had to descend through potentially hostile airspace, level off at 200 to 300 feet, and release torpedoes within visual range of the target area. Pilots joked that you could see the submarine crew's laundry hanging on the periscope. Now, the P-8 never even leaves its optimal cruise altitude, but here's where things get really interesting, because finding the submarine is only half the battle. The Hawk system is the final link in what naval aviators call the kill chain, a sophisticated sequence that begins long before any torpedo hits the water. It starts with the P-8's APY-10 radar, a maritime surveillance system so sensitive it can detect a periscope cutting through waves from over 200 miles away. But the real submarine hunting happens beneath the surface. The P-8 carries 129 sonoboys. Think of them as underwater microphones that create a massive listening network. The aircraft deploys these in precise patterns, some passive listeners waiting for submarine noise, others active pingers that bounce sound off the hull like underwater radar. The newest multi-static active coherent sonoboys, or MAC boys, work together like an underwater sensor web, triangulating submarine positions with unprecedented accuracy. Here's where the P-8's computers earn their keep. The acoustic processor correlates thousands of sound signatures per second. The submarine's machinery, the cavitation from its propellers, even the sound of its hull compressing at depth. Within seconds, the system generates a fire control solution. Bearing, range, depth, speed, and predicted course. The weapons officer programs these coordinates into the Hawk, accounting for ocean currents, water temperature layers that affect torpedo performance, and the submarine's likely evasion pattern. With a simple button press, the torpedo launches into its glide path. 20 minutes later and 40 miles away, that submarine captain's worst nightmare splashes into the water above him. But this technology didn't appear overnight. The journey to Hawk reveals just how desperate the Navy was to solve a growing problem. For 50 years, the P-3 Orion defined American anti-submarine warfare. These turboprop workhorses could loiter for hours at low altitude, burning less fuel while searching for Soviet submarines. 
But by 2010, three problems converged that demanded a radical solution. First, modern surface-to-air missiles made low-altitude flight increasingly suicidal. Chinese HQ-9 and Russian S-400 systems can engage aircraft at ranges exceeding 200 miles, far beyond visual detection range. Second, the P-8 Poseidon, based on the Boeing 737, was optimized for high-altitude efficiency. Flying it at 500 feet burned fuel at catastrophic rates, cutting mission time by 40%. Third, Peer adversaries began deploying submarines with advanced acoustic silencing, requiring longer search times over larger areas. The solution came from an unlikely source, the Joint Direct Attack Munition Program that gave bombs GPS-guided wing kits. If it worked for bombs, why not torpedoes? Boeing began development in 2013, but early tests were disasters. Torpedoes tumbled uncontrollably, wing kits failed to separate, and several test weapons simply vanished into the Pacific. The breakthrough came in 2016 when engineers redesigned the separation mechanism and added spin stabilization to the glide phase. By 2019, successful tests showed 90% accuracy rates. The Navy immediately classified further details, but procurement documents reveal they've ordered over 500 Hawk kits, with Boeing's newest Block II contract worth $121 million, suggesting significant improvements we're not allowed to know about yet. Speaking of things we're not supposed to know, let's look at how Hawk might perform in an actual combat scenario. Picture this hypothetical scenario. October 2025, tensions over Taiwan reach a breaking point. Chinese Type 039B submarines slip through the Miyako Strait, attempting to position themselves along shipping routes American carriers would use to respond. Their mission, create an underwater blockade that makes U.S. intervention too costly. AP-8A Poseidon, call sign Pelican 41, launches from Kadena Air Base in Okinawa. Flying at 35,000 feet, it looks like any other commercial aircraft on radar. The crew begins their search pattern 200 miles east of Taiwan, well outside the range of land-based Chinese air defenses. They deploy a curtain of sonoboys across the submarine's likely approach route. Three hours into the mission, passive Sonoboy number 47 picks up a faint signature, a submarine's cooling pump running at a frequency that matches Chinese type 039B acoustic intelligence. The crew drops additional MAC buoys, creating a 20 mile detection box. Within minutes, they have a solid track. Submarine bearing 247, range 18 miles, depth 400 feet, speed 5 knots. The tactical coordinator programs the Hawk from 30,000 feet and 35 miles away. Pelican 41 releases the weapon. For 18 minutes, it glides silently through the stratosphere, its GPS brain constantly recalculating the perfect splash point based on the submarine's projected position. The Chinese submarine, running silent and deep, has no idea death is falling from the sky. The torpedo enters the water 800 yards ahead of the submarine's track. Its seeker head immediately acquires the target. The submarine launches countermeasures, noisemakers, and bubble walls, but the Mark 54's advanced processor ignores the decoys. Three minutes later, the warhead detonates against the submarine's hull. In real combat, this entire engagement would occur beyond visual range, with the P-8 crew never seeing their target or coming within range of its defensive systems. But not everyone's celebrating this capability. Hawk has critics, and their concerns might surprise you. Here's what the Navy doesn't advertise. Hawk has limitations that keep submarine commanders sleeping soundly. The system only works in relatively calm seas, Anything above Sea State 4 with waves exceeding 8 feet degrades accuracy significantly. The GPS guidance can be jammed, though the Navy claims classified backups exist. In that 40-mile glide range, it shrinks to 15 miles in strong headwinds. Cost is another controversy. Each Hawk kit costs approximately $380,000. That's on top of the $2.1 million Mark 54 torpedo. Critics argue that's nearly $2.5 million per shot, with no guarantee of a kill. Submarine countermeasures are improving rapidly, with Russia's newest boats carrying torpedo-killing torpedoes specifically designed to intercept weapons like the Mark 54. There's also the ethical dimension nobody wants to discuss. Hawk makes submarine warfare almost clinical, crews launching torpedoes at targets they'll never see, from distances that eliminate any human element from the equation. Some naval ethicists worry this PlayStation mentality could lower the threshold for using lethal force in maritime disputes. Perhaps most concerning, China's response. Intelligence reports suggest they're developing their own high-altitude torpedo delivery system, potentially paired with their Y-8Q maritime patrol aircraft. If successful, American submarines operating in the South China Sea could face the same stratospheric threat. 
The underwater sanctuary that submarines have enjoyed for a century might be ending, and Hawk pulled the trigger on that arms race. Let's recap what makes Hawk revolutionary. It transforms the Mark 54 torpedo into a standoff weapon with 40-mile range. It keeps P-8 crews at safe altitudes, beyond the reach of most air defense systems. It integrates seamlessly with the P-8's sophisticated sensor suite, creating a submarine hunting system that operates like a well-oiled machine. And with over 500 kits on order and Block 2 improvements rolling out, it's clear the Navy sees this as the future of anti-submarine warfare. The strategic implications are staggering. In any Taiwan Strait crisis, Pacific submarine transit route, or Arctic confrontation, American P-8s armed with Hawk provide an invisible shield that enemy submarines must penetrate. It's not just about sinking submarines, it's about deterrence. Knowing that American aircraft can prosecute attacks from the stratosphere changes every submarine captain's risk calculation. But here's the billion-dollar question that should keep naval strategists awake at night. What happens when everyone has this capability? When Chinese, Russian, and even allied nations deploy their own high-altitude torpedo systems, will submarines become too vulnerable to operate? Are we witnessing the beginning of the end for traditional submarine warfare, or will the silent service adapt once again, as it always has? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. How do you think submarines will counter the Hawk threat? And more importantly, is making submarine warfare this easy actually a good thing for global stability?